morning so we are discussing about needle signal processing so before discussing this what actually is a needle signal processing so naturally occurring signals are analog in nature so whenever i say we have to process some signal what we have to do analog signal systems are susceptible to noise analog system here are changes with the time because of the change in behavior of analog compound like resistor capacitors and a power analog system designed for a purpose can be used only for that purpose only so as we define the three types of signals analog signal discrete signal and digital signal when i say analog signal in case of analog signal amplitude is continuous in a time as well as time axis is also continuous in case of discrete time axis is discretized but amplitude is continuous and in case of digital signal time time axis is discrete and as well as your amplitude axis is quantized so what actually digital signal processing signals need to be processed so that the information that they contain can be displayed analyzed or converted to other type of signal so for that we have to use different types of converters if suppose i have to use analog signal first what we have to do we have to convert it into digital one then using the digital signal processor we have to process that particular signal and then for real time application we have to convert it again into analog one using digital to analog converter so for example we can say mp3 player so here if i say input signal we are giving to a mic or a microphone input signal is analog one that is my speech that we convert using analog reader into digital one that is binary then using tsp processor for example tms320 what we do we analyze that particular signal analog signal after digitization if possible we can amplify we can remove its noise and then again using reader to analog converter we give it to receiver this is mp3 encoder where we use dsp processor or a dsp for conversion of analog signal to digital and again digital to analog this is basic dsp block diagram so as we discuss naturally occurring signals are analog in nature for a digital signal processing what is my first work for first task we have to convert your analog signal into digital one first we are using anti aliasing filter so that to remove aliasing as per our concept of a sampling we have seen nyquist criteria as per nyquist criteria your sampling frequency should be twice the bandwidth so for that we are using first anti aliasing filter to band limit your given signal then using sample and hold circuit we are converting into digital signal by using digital signal processor for example tms320 we are processing that particular signal and again we are converting into analog one and finally using reconstruction filter we are getting finally analog signal that is desired signal for your application what is inside dsp now we have discussed what actually is the signal what is digital signal processing and what actually is the needed in dsp we have program memory data memory compute engine and input and output if i say compute engine it is it access program memory and data memory where we get the input and then using different dsp process we what we do we analyze our signals the advantages of dsp over analog signal processing basic difference between two in analog signal processing we directly take analog signal and we manipulate it in case of dsp we go for digital signal first is the flexibility same hardware can be used to do various types of signal processing task in case of dsp repeatability the same signal processing operation can be repeated over and over giving same results accuracy in case of digital is higher as compared to your analog signal processing as signal we are converting into digital domain the storage is easily possible again we can implement this digital design or ds processor easily and it is are cheaper to implement as we discuss advantages there are some disadvantages is the complexity limited the bandwidth more costly hardware and more power consumption but still we have discussed advantage and disadvantage we can say the choice between analog and digital signal processing depends on the application one has to compare design time size and cost of the implementation for desired application applications of dsp as we say there are 
many applications of DSP in real time. First is the filtering. If suppose I am acquiring any signal for the application purpose, while acquiring signal there are disturbances that we say noise. That noise we have to filter using your DSP. Second is speech synthesis in which white noise is filtered on selective frequency basis in order to get an audio signal. Now whatever I am delivering a speech, it is also having some noise from external background. If we have to remove this particular noise, what we have to do? We have to design a filter so that it can just remove that particular noise. Speech compression and expansion for use in radio voice communication. Speech recognition, signal analysis. Again, image processing. Image processing as a part of DSP, data signal processing, where we use filtering, image effects, or enhancement of your images. Modulation used in telecommunication. You might have discussed in case of analog combination, different types of modulations, FMM. These are again a part of your data signal processing. High speed modem data communication using pulse modulation systems such as FSK or quadrature amplitude modulation and waveform generation. If I go specifically in case of telecommunication, eco cancellation will be there or system modulations will be there. In case of conjunct electronics that need the camera and digital TV, again it is special application of your DSP, music synthetic instruments, noise reduction, audio effects. In case of biomedical MRI, ultrasonic imaging, ECG, EEG and MEG. What is ECG? ECG is nothing but electrocardiogram, it is electric activity of a heart. So that ECG we can acquire from a patient body, then we can, after acquiring, using DSP processing, we can find out particular ECG features from which we can find out or we can monitor that particular patient. Experimental physics, sensor data evaluation, if I say aviation that is radar or radio navigation, we use again the same DSP concept. In case of image processing, image analysis or a pattern recognition, military, Missile guidance that will be using DSP, DSP processing applications from long time ago. Or you have a speech processing where we go for speech recognition, speech synthesis, instrumentation and control. In robot control also we are using DSP application. Seismology where earthquake monitoring or detection of underground explosion. This can also be done using your digital signal processing. Next we are going to see concept of a correlation. What actually is a correlation? Correlation is nothing but finding degree of similarity between any two signals. That is correlation is measure of similarity. There are two types of correlation depend on which signals we are using. If suppose we are using the same signals, x of n and x of n, that type of correlation is nothing but autocorrelation. And if we are using two different signals for finding out similarity, that is nothing but my cross correlation. Formula gamma x of l is equal to summation and ranging from minus infinity to infinity x of n x of n minus l where x of n minus l represent shifted signal and l is equal to from 0 to plus minus 1 to it gone value. So there are properties of the correlation for l is equal to 0 in this previous equation if I am say gamma x of l x of n x of n minus l if I replace l is equal to 0 what I get? gamma x x of l for l equal to 0 is equal to summation from minus infinity to infinity x of n square that is nothing but my energy equation. So autocorrelation defines energy of the sequence for lag equal to 0. Second correlation possesses property of even sequence that is gamma x x of l equal to gamma x x of minus l or gamma x y of l equal to gamma x y of minus l. Another property of a correlation we have discussed Convolution. What is convolution of a signal? So what is correlation? Correlation is nothing but it is convolution of two signals in that just one of the signal is reversible. For example, if I have two signals or two sequences given x of n is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4 and h of n is equal to 1, 2, 1, 2. We have to find out cross correlation. As both signals are different, what we have to, what we will get here? We will go for cross correlation. Now what are steps to solve this particular example? We have two sequences. First, x of n and h of n. First what we have to do? Find range of x of n and range of h of minus n. That is length of x of n and length of h of n. For this particular example, length of x of n is equal to 4. So indices will be 0, 1, 2, 3. And h of n will be from again 0, 1, 2, 3. But for calculating range of l, what we have to do? We have to change 
h of n we have to reverse h of n to h of minus n so what will be h of minus n we will get from minus 3 minus 2 minus 1 and 0 so next comes my second calculate range of l why calculating range of l what we have to do take lower limit of x of n and add into lower limit of h of minus n for this example lower limit of x of n is 0 and lower limit of h of minus n is minus 3 so i will get lower limit of l equal to minus 3 Similarly, for getting higher limit or upper limit, what we have to do? We have to add upper limit of first sequence x of n and upper limit of reverse sequence h of minus n. So for this example, what is upper limit of x of n? That is a 3 and h of n, h of minus n, upper limit 0. So my range of l will be from minus 3 to plus 3. So using my equation of gamma x of l is equal to minus infinity to infinity x of n and minus l. Here for this example, L will range from 0 to plus minus 1, plus minus 2, plus minus 3. We will simplify and we can find out gamma x so I have 0, 1, 2, 3, minus 1, minus 2 and minus 3. Now next is main discrete Fourier transform. Before that, I would like to say what actually is a Fourier transform. Transform is nothing but we are converting one particular signal from one domain to another domain without losing its characteristics. And what is density for a Levy transform when I convert one signal from one domain to another domain there should be reverse path so that we can convert that second domain to again first domain in case of discrete Fourier transform it is frequency domain representation of x of n by samples of its spectrum x of omega what is x of omega it is DTFP discrete time Fourier transform that we are sampling to get your x of k so formula of x of k is nothing but summation and ranging from 0 to n minus 1 x of n e raised to minus j to pi k n by n k ranging from 0 to n minus 1 in another way if I have x of k to get x of n we have formula for IDFT that is 1 upon n summation k ranging from 0 to n minus 1 x of k e raised to j to pi k n by n and n ranging from 0 to n minus 1 now as per property of DFT, there are different properties. Periodicity, where x of k plus n is equal to x of k, after some shift we get the same signal again. Linearity, where if we are adding two signals or two sequences, then the final DFT will be also addition of two individual DFTs. Circular time shift, where x of n minus n modulo n in the time domain, nothing but x of k multiplied by Exponential, exponential term. What is this concept of modulo x n minus m? What we do in case of modulo? Whenever they say modulo m, first what we have to do, draw a circle and divide it into n number of samples. Then graph your x of n sequence in anticlockwise and if they are mentioning any n minus m, then take m rotation in the anticlockwise direction. Same circular frequency shift. In case of Circular time shift, we are taking modular operation in time domain. In case of frequency shift, we are taking modular operation in frequency domain. Final is main property of DMT that is circular convolution. So what we say, circular convolution is nothing but what we do, if we have two sequences x1 of n and x2 of n, first we take its DFT, x1 of k and x2 of k. Then we take multiplication of k as x3 of k, then multiplication of x1 k, x2 k. Then if I find out its IDFT, then I will get its circular convolution. That is nothing but multiplication of two DFTs in time domain, nothing but its circular convolution. Now we have seen DFT formula using summation x of n e raised to minus j to pi k by n. But for making sim calculation simpler, we use concept of middle factor. What actually is the Twitter factor in expression? We just replace e raised to minus j to pi k n by n by w n of n k. That is nothing but my Twitter factor w n of n k. So using Twitter factor, what is the equation of your DFT? x of k is equal to summation and ranging from n minus 0 to n minus 1 x of n w n of n k, where k ranging from 0 to n minus 1. And whatever w n n k matrix we get, that is nothing but my transformation matrix. And in same way, what is IFT? It is 1 by n summation x of k, w n of minus n k. 
properties of a twiddle factor. As we say, twiddle factor is nothing but Wn of nk raised to minus j2 pi nk by n. There are two properties of twiddle factor, twiddle periodicity and symmetry. What is periodicity property? Wn of r is equal to Wn of r plus n. If I consider W4 of 0, it will be equal to W4 of 4 because R value 0 and capital value 4. So W4 0 equal to W4 4, W4 8. Likewise. Similarly, Wn of R is equal to minus Wn of R plus minus n by 2. If I consider here W4 of 0, it will be equal to minus W4. What is value of n? 4. 4 by 2, 2. So R plus 2, 2. So W4. 0 is equal to minus W4, 2. Next we will consider now what actually is the circular convolution. I will discuss in property that multiplication of 2 DFTs in frequency domain is nothing but its circular convolution in time domain. There are 4 different types to calculate circular convolution. Out of that first is finding circular convolution using graphical method or concentric circular method. How to solve this particular type, this type of example? They are given two sequences x of n and h of n. What we have to do first? First graph or a plot first sequence x of n on the outer circle in anti-clockwise direction. Then second, for second step what we have to do? Plot h of n sequence in the inside circle starting from the same x of n but it will, it will be in clockwise direction. Multiply corresponding samples and whatever output we will get that will be for y of 0 is first output for getting next output what we have to do just rotate inner circle one by one for each shift I will get one output and where we have to stop whenever we rotate inner circle one by one in anti-clockwise direction there will be one condition in, in that we will get same plot as per your previous so stop there and just repeat step number 4 for next calculation. So this is circular convolution using graphical method. Second is the matrix multiplication method. What we do here? We have two sequences again. X of n and h of n. First we have to arrange x of n sequence as a matrix. First, first follow x0, x1, x2, x3. What we have to do in next step? Just take x3 to top and repeat block as it is. x0, x1, x2. So same I will get here first matrix or first sequence and just multiply with second sequence we will get final y0, y1, y2, y3 this will be output of your circular convolution. Third is a tabular method similar to matrix method just here what we have to do we have to shift one sequence horizontally. Now if I consider two sequences g of 0 and h of 0 you can see from this matrix what we get h of 0, h1, h2, h3 the column is remain same for all columns h0, h1, h2, h3 what change happens here first plus g of n horizontally then take gg first repeat same block so when I get this matrix what we have to do to get output just take addition of each column and addition of each column will give you single output y0, y1, y2, y3 so this is third method that is a tabular method fourth that we already discussed DFT IDFT method in this what we have to do if we have two sequences what actually we have to do first take DFT of two sequences if I if suppose I have two sequences xk and xk so x of n and h of n first take DFT x of k and h of k then take its multiplication say that multiplication as a y of k y of k is nothing but xk into h of k and its IDFT is nothing but y of n that will be circular convolution in time domain that is x of n circularly convolved with h of n the basic difference between two linear convolution and circular convolution. Now we have two sequences, suppose x of n and h of n. Length of first sequence x of n is capital L, length of second sequence h of n is a capital M. There There is a difference in between output of two linear and circular. In case of linear convolution, output, whatever output we get that is L plus M minus 1, that is addition of length of two sequences minus 1. But in case of a circular convolution, we get maximum in between 2 L and M. Second y of N, that is representation of linear convolution y of N is nothing but x of N multiplied by h of N. And in case of circular convolution, you use notation and for circular convolution. In case of linear convolution, you can find 
response of a linear filter, but in case of circular convolution, we cannot find response of linear filter. In case of linear convolution, there is no need of zero padding, but in case of circular convolution, we have to use zero padding. There is a concept of linear convolution using circular convolution. So what we do in case of this, what we say whenever I have two sequences of length L and M, what is the output of circular convolution? Maximum in between L and M. But in case of linear convolution, it is L plus M minus 1. So if I get same length answer for circular convolution, that will be similar to your linear convolution. So for that, what we have to do? This is again similar, where we can say linear convolution using DFT identity method, or we can say it is finding linear convolution using circular convolution. Now just here, I have two sequences X of N and H of N. X of N is having length L, H of N is having length capital N. What we have to do first, as its sequence length is L, we have to make it equal to capital N. So we have to pad M minus 1 0 in first sequence and we have to pad L minus 1 0 in second sequence. So what will be length of X of N and H of N for this second stage? Length of both sequences will be equal to capital N is equal to L plus M minus 1. Then we are taking here n point DFT, I will get H of K, n point DFT I will get here H of K. What is my next step? We have to multiply these into DFTs. So I will get Y of K, it will be again of n points. Length of Y of K will be n. To get IDFT, what we have to do? We have to go for n point IDFT so that I can finally get Y of n. So this Y of n is nothing but circular resolution of X of n and H of n. As we are increasing sequence length of X of n and H of n equal to n is equal to L plus M minus 1. This y of n is also equal to linear convolution of X of n and H of n. So this is linear convolution using DFT, IDFT. Next is the concept of overlap same and overlap add. Where what we do? We have a longer data sequence. That longer data sequence we have to divide into short sequences. We have to take circular convolution and we have to add these all the outputs so that finally we are getting again linear convolved output. So in case of poor level sir, if suppose this is an input signal, x of n of length capital L s having higher length. What we do? We divide it into smaller sequences of L and we get input blocks. So in case of poor level sir, for getting input block, what we do? For the first block, we add m minus 1 zeros. First m minus 1 zeros we have to add. And then just take next L data point you are from your given sequence. So I will get here first input block x1 of n, its length will be equal to n is equal to L plus m minus 1. Where small l, it is divided 1 and m minus 1 zeros we have added for first sequence. But in case of four lines, like say while getting second sequence, what we have to do? Take last m minus 1 elements from a previous block and repeat as it is and then take new L points to get second block that I will get x2 of n again its length will be equal to L plus m minus 1 same if I go for x3 of n what we have to do again repeat process take last m minus 1 points from your previous block and repeat as it is for x3 of n and take remaining L points from your original sequence so I get I got here three different sequences x1 of n, x2 of n and x3 of n. They have given h of n that is impulse response of a sequence. If it is of length m, what we have to do? If I have to go for a circular convolution, there is a one main point for circular convolution length of both sequences should be equal to same. If I consider x1 of n, what is length? L plus m minus 1. So for h of n, to make length equal to L plus m minus 1, what we have to do? We have to add L minus 1 0 in your impulse response and then we have to take circular convolution of x1 of n with h of n, x2 of n with h of n and x3 of n with h of n. For this you can use any one of method out of four as a graphical matrix tabular or DFT identity method. Once I convert these input sequences with impulse response I get output plus y1, y2 and y3. In case of a overlap observe, as we are repeating a data, we get values that are corrupted due to aliasing. So to get final output, what we have to do? Discard first m minus 1 elements from each block and just combine these all the elements so that I will get final output y of n. This is nothing but your overlap observe method. Similarly, in case of 
overlap and method we are again using circular convolution but with slight difference for for video error input blocks x1 x2 x3 what we have to do we have given sequence x of n of length ls we have to divide into l data points so first x1 of l will be take l points as it is and add m minus 1 zeros in it so i will get first sequence x1 of n which will be of length capital n equal to l plus m minus 1 Similarly, take next three next L elements and add m minus one zeros. Next L elements and add m minus one zero. So that I will get three different blocks x one, x two, and x three. As in case of overlap theorem method, what we discussed for circular convolution we need equal length. So for this example, for this case also, what we have to do? We have to make impulse response length equal to n is equal to l plus m minus one. So add l minus one zeros in each of them. So that I will get both sequences of length l plus m minus one. So when I convert these sequences, I will get again y one, y two, and y three. As there is no overlapping, there is no aliasing in case of overlap and method. So for finalizing output, what we have to do? Take m minus one elements of last m minus one elements of first output block and add it to first m minus one of successive block. Take addition of these two. Take addition of these two. And combine your sequence output blocks, you will get final output that is y of n using overlap and method. What is the difference between these two methods? When I consider forming blocks x1, x2, x3, size of input data block in case of overlap size is equal to l plus m minus one, but in case of overlap add is equal to capital L. In case of overlap size. Last m minus elements of each block, previous block are taken to next block where we are repeating the points. But in case of overlap add, we are just taking l points and adding m minus one zeros to each data block. In case of overlap itself, there is corruption or aliasing as we are using overlapping of terms. We are taking m minus one of last block to next block. And to get output in case of overlap, so we are discarding first m minus one elements. But in case of overlap add, we are adding last m minus one of previous block to first m minus one of next block. This is different between two overlap so and overlap add. Now we will discuss DFT discrete Fourier transform using your basic formula of DFT where x of k is equal to summation and ranging from zero to n minus one. X of n is to minus j two by k n by n, and value of k ranging from zero to n minus one. But if we calculate number of computations required for calculating DFT, this is the data. Number of complex multiplications required to calculate single value of x of k, it is n. Say number of complex additions n minus one. Number of real multiplications four n, and number of real addition equal to four n minus two. These are all Multiplications or computations required are just calculated for single value of x of k. For n point DFT, how many values you have to calculate? You have to calculate totally n point DFT or n values. So for n point DFT x of k, I need number of multiplications required n square, number of complex addition n n minus one, number of real multiplication four n square and real addition four n minus two. As the number of multiplications are getting increased. What we have to do? We have to think about something new method to calculate a DFT, which will require less computations and which should require less time. So first, foremost approach that is post fast Fourier transform, where what we are doing? We are reducing number of computations required for calculating DFT. We are reducing number of reducing the time required to calculate DFT. First, we divide and conquer approach, where what we are doing? Given n value, we are factorizing in, in between two l and m. If consider value of n equal to 15 and divide it into five into three. So for this algorithm, what we have to do? In divide and conquer approach, I have two algorithms. Algorithm one, algorithm two. In first algorithm, store signal column wise. So you can see, I have n equal to 15, so I have to be values from 0 to 14. So first represent that we are arranging or we are storing the sequence column wise. Then we are taking 
M point DFT of each row. So this second stage represent M point DFT. Right? Yeah, when we go to three, so it is three point DFT. It will take three point DFT of each row. First row x zero, x five, x ten. Likewise, we are taking here DFT values. At this three point DFT, so two will be again three values. So in next stage or in second stage, what we are doing? We are multiplying this calculated DFT values with phase factor W. Then we will get again fifteen values. As we are taking here row wise DFT, in the last stage we are taking five point column wise DFT. And whatever output will be there, we have to read it as a row wise. Just check what is algorithm. First, arrange sequence column wise. Once I arrange column wise, check. M point DFT of each row. Once I get DFT of each row, multiply with the phase factor. When I get multiply output, take L point DFT of each column, and whatever output I will get, read it as a row wise. As we are starting with column wise, we are ending with row wise. What is second algorithm step? Store single row wise. So in previous, we went for column wise. Here we have to use row wise. Once I go row wise, complete L point DFT of each column, then multiply with your output with phase factor W. Once I multiply, then again I will get total n values. Then take M point DFT of each row, and whatever output I will get, read that output as a column wise. So this is divide and conquer approach, where number of multiplications required to calculate DFT will be less. Next, we have to see. Basic FFT algorithm that is radix to two algorithm where what is this radix to? If they have given value of an n point DFT, if we can represent value of n as a power of two, that algorithm is nothing but an radix to two algorithm. There are two types of radix to algorithm. One is a decimation in time and second is decimation in frequency. Out of that, we have to first see concept of bit reversal algorithm. So in case of the IT or the DR, there is concept of butterfly diagram, where we are saying basic butterfly diagram is having two inputs and two outputs, and the inputs should be in bit reverse order. Now in case of what is in case of FFT algorithm, what actually is a bit reverse algorithm? If I consider n is equal to k, I will be I will be having input sample index from zero to seven. So first step what we have to do first represent this index indexes as a Binary representation that is zero 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 one like that from zero to seven. What is next step? Just reverse these bits so that I will get bit reverse binary. And once I get bit reverse binary, again convert it to input indices. So if this is input sequence from x zero, x one, x two, x three, x four, x five, x six, x seven, I will get bit reverse output as zero four two six one five three seven. This is nothing but Concept of dividing your sequence either odd index values or even index values. If I say n is equal to four, I will be having only four indices: zero, one, two, three. So if I go to bit reversal, what will happen here for only three? I will get zero, two, one, and n. This is the basic bit reversal algorithm. First algorithm in case of FFT is nothing but decimation in the time. So for this, there are number of steps. That how to start solving example or finding DFT using decimation in time. What you have to do first? First represent number of input samples n is equal to two raised to capital M, where capital M represent any integer value. Second, in case of the IT, input is a bit reverse, but output will be in natural order. Number of stages in flow graph that capital M is equal to log of n to the base of two. It will give number of stages in your Program. If value of n equal to a, we can represent it as a two raised to three. So capital one value will be equal to three. So for n is equal to a, I can get totally three stages. Number of butterflies in each stage, capital n by two. So for n is equal to a, each stage will have total four butterflies. Input and input output samples are separated by two raised to n minus one samples. Now, as we discussed in case of direct evaluation of DFT, we need maximum number of computations. In case of the IT or the IFFT algorithm, we need just n by two log n to the base two number of complex multiplications, and we need n log n complex additions. Total factor exponents are a function of stage index.
index f k is equal to n p divided by 2 raised to m where small n represents stage index for stage 1 m equal to 1 stage 2 m equal to 2 stage 2 m equal to 3 like this number of sections of butterflies in stage each stage nothing but 2 raised to capital m minus m and exponent repeat factor that is exponent repeat factor represent number of times your exponent repeats for each stage that is again given by 2 raised to m minus m just keep it in mind in this DID case, we are using input retrievers and output in natural order. Second is decimation in the frequency that is a DRF. Number of input samples m, n is equal to 2 raised to m, where m should be your integer. A main difference in case of DRF, input is in natural order but output is in bit reverse. Number of stages in flow graph, log n. That is capital M, number of butterflies in each stage, n by 2 similar to your DIT, input output samples 2 raised to m minus m. Again, either it may be DIT or DIF, number of complex multiplications and addition will be same, n by 2 log n to the base 2 or n log n to the base 2. Total factor exponents, k is equal to n t divided by 2 raised to m minus m plus 1, and number of sections 2 raised to m minus 1 exponent repeat factor that I said. Number of times your exponent will repeat in each stage that is nothing but 2 raised to m minus 1. Now if I say names of these algorithm, decimation in time and decimation in frequency, what we can say? Decimation is nothing but breaking of your sequences. Now as I discussed FFT algorithm, there will be input x of n and output will be x of k to find out DLT. When I say decimation in time, means you are using time domain sequence we are decimating, means your input is bit reverse. Input bit reverse means your time domain sequence is decimated. And in case of decimation in frequency, input is in natural order but output x of k is bit reverse means your frequency domain is decimated. That's why these names are decimation in time and decimation in frequency. Similarities and differences between the two, as we discussed the different steps for both, number of computation required will be same for DIT and DRF. Both can be done in the plus. What is in the plus the computation? When I say any butterfly diagram, there will be input and output. But when there are number of stages, 1, 2, 3. So for first stage, input will be there and output will be there. But for a second stage, output of first stage will be input for second stage. That's why this is nothing but these algorithms are called as an in plus computation. Both need to perform bit reversal at some plus. When I consider both algorithms, either DIT or DIF, we require bit reversal at some plus. In case of DIT, I need it at input and in case of DIF, I will go for output bit reversal. What is difference in DIT? <coughs> input is bit reversed and output is in natural. In DIF, input is in natural order and output is in DIF. Output is in bit reverse. If I consider basic operation of two butterflies, Butterfly for a DIT and a butterfly for DIF. When I consider basic operation, what is here? A and B represent input and these are output. So first the output will be A into B multiplied by fiddle factor and when I go for the output, second output, second output will be first input minus B into your fiddle factor But in case of a DIF, there is a slight change. Whenever there are two inputs A and B, what we have to do for? First output will be summation of two inputs and second output will be subtraction of two inputs and then multiplied by your total factor W. Now we have seen till now how to find out DFT using DIF or DIT algorithm. Next is nothing but finding IDFT using FFT algorithm. Till now we have discussed how to calculate DFT. So for that we have to first convert equation of IDFT in DFT. What will be our first step? If they are given sequence x of k, first step is complex conjugate. x of k is there, then take x conjugate k. Then depend on which algorithm they have used, they are asked to use either DIT and DIF, go for input sequence, either bit reverse or in natural order. Apply respective algorithm, either DIT or DIF. Depend on the algorithm again, check whether output is in natural or Big reverse order, but in case of this FFT algorithm for the IDFT output is nothing but n in 
into x conjugate n and we need answer for x of n so for getting final output what we have to do we have to divide it by n and take its complex conjugate so that finally i will get x of n so this is method to calculate the idft using the id or the n as a variable next is fourier series next is your simple filter design two types of filters fr and r filter in case of fr filter design it is a finite impulse response three types fourier series method windowing method and a frequency sampling method in case of fourier series they have given hd of e raised to j omega that is a frequency response hd of e raised to j omega is equal to summation and ranging from minus infinity to infinity hd of n e raised to minus j omega from this using inverse formula we have to calculate first hd of n this hd of n is nothing but 1 upon 2 pi minus pi to pi hd of e raised to j omega e raised to j omega and t omega but here value of n will range from minus infinity to infinity but r is in finite what we need we have to design a finite impulse response where your impulse response should be of finite one so to make it finite what we have to do we have to truncate your given sequence so by truncating means what we have to do we have to just cut short your sequence hd of n so hd of n after truncating if i say it is h of n h of n will be equal to hd of n where n range from minus n minus 1 by 2 to plus n minus 1 by 2 So here I will get h of n finite impulse. Then transfer function of filter is given by h of z equal to h of zero summation n ranging from one to n minus one by two h of n z raised to n plus z raised to minus n. But it is physically not realizable. That's why to make it realizable, what we do? We just multiply this h of z with z raised to minus n minus one by two, so that I will get final realizable filter. So this is Fourier series method to find out FR filter or to design FR filter. But whenever we go here for a truncation, due to abrupt truncation or direct truncation of your infinite sequence to finite sequence, there are attenuation in pass band and stop band ripples that are undesired oscillation. Pass band and stop band that is nothing but by noise and this phenomenon of abrupt truncation and generating oscillations in pass band and stop band is nothing but by gives a phenomenon. So it is just occurred due to this finite truncation of infinite sequence to finite one. So to remove this, there is another method of designing a FR filter that is nothing but windowing method. Where again we are using the same method. Given is H D of e raised to j omega. They are given frequency response H D of e raised to j omega. That is nothing but summation H D of n e raised to minus j omega. Then using inverse formula, what we have to calculate? We have to calculate H D of n. H D of n is equal to one upon two pi minus pi two pi H D of e raised to j omega e raised to j omega into d omega. Now, as we discuss, we cannot go for abrupt truncation. As it is infinite, we have to make it finite in any way. So to make it finite, what we have to do? We have to multiply this HD of n by any finite sequence. That finite sequence is nothing but window, and by multiplying window, we will get HD of n as a finite response. So HD of n is equal to HD of n into W of n, where n ranging from minus n minus one by two to plus n minus one by two. Where W of n is a window sequence depend on window to be used. Again, similarly, we have to go for H of Z, but as this H of Z is not physically realizable, we have to go for H dash of Z, that is nothing but Z raised to minus n minus one by two into H of Z. So this is a window method, but depend on characteristics of each window sequence, there are different types of windows: rectangular, amin, amin, partlet, or kaiser window. So what is my rectangular window? It is represented as W R of n. It is having amplitude equal to one from minus n minus one by two to n minus one by two, and is equal to zero otherwise. Same. If I consider for a Hamming window, it is nothing but point five four point plus point four six cos two pi divided by n minus one. It is 
value from minus 1 minus 2 minus n minus 1 by 2 to plus n minus 1 by 2 but as we are using it for non causal sequence if you have to use same for causal sequence what we have to do we have to just change this sign plus 2 minus so in case of causal sequence it will be w h of n is equal to 0 0.54 minus 0 0.46 cos 2 pi n minus 1 range will be from 0 to n minus 1 similarly for hanging window w h of n is equal to 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 cos 2 pi n minus 1 from minus n minus 1 by 2 to plus n minus 1 by 2 it is for causal sequence and for anti causal sequence what we have to sorry for normal causal sequence what we have to do we have to just replace, replace this plus n by minus n for what left 1 minus 2 n divided by n minus 1 that is from minus n minus 1 by 2 to plus n minus 1 by 2 